So we're going to be tying up our jig nymph here. We've got a size 14, uh, 60 degree uh, Togan's um, jig hook. We've got a 3.8 millimeter uh, copper tungsten bead. And we're going to be using a uh, small copper wire. For the collar, we're going to be using Togan's Prison Dubbing in Kingfisher Blue. This stuff is a fish magnet. For our thread, we've got uh, UTC 70 in brown. And for a trigger point, just under the tail, we're going to be using um, Uni Thread 8 dot in fire orange. All right, so let's get started here. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to tie on our thread here. So what we're doing here, is we're just bringing our thread back and we're going to go right behind the curve with this. And what this does is this just makes a little bit of an attractor when fish are picking this up. And you can really kind of build this up a little bit here because you want it to uh, also taper up to the tail, but you want that nice and a nice strong color when it's wet it's going to come through. And then I bring it up to the front and I tie it off. Come here with my Togan's Whip Finisher. Three wraps, one, two, three, and it's done. That's all you need that thread for. Then you're going to come in here with your UTC Brown and tie it in. in here with our micro scissor or our spring scissors here. Chop it down, straighten it out a little bit, counterclockwise spin. And you're just kind of covering up your your brown thread here. I'm just gonna come back here. I kind of went a little bit thick there. Taper that down or get that nice and flat. Then, what you're going to do, you're going to take your few fibers, not too many, you know. This is an attractor pattern. It has a nice, nice to have our tails on our nymphs like this. So I usually use about half a dozen. Pull them nice and straight. So you got your tips all aligned here, 90 degree angle. Come in here with my all-purpose scissors and I think these are the arrow points actually. Come in there and take your tail. You're going to tie that in just like that. And what you can do is you can adjust it. Now when you're doing these nymphs, you don't want a long tail. It affects the drag in the current. So you want to bring that right down nice and short. Just like that. You're going to bring that all the way up to the front. Give a little snip here. Here's where the spring scissors are really nice. Get right close in there. Easy to use, quick to use. We'll be talking about those in a, at another time. And I'm going to take my, my copper wire in small. Pull off a little piece. You don't need it too long, maybe two and a half inches or so. Cut that off. Oops. And take that now. Bring that up, tighten that up a little bit. There we go. And all I've done here is I've just tied it in on that side right there. You're just going to run that, straighten out your fiber, or straighten out your thread, roll it counterclockwise. There we go. Then, 
you're going to take some pheasant tail. Not too many fibers, maybe, I don't know, let's say about six, five or six, six or seven. Pull it to a 90 degree again. Come in, clip them. Right there, folding up like that. That's where you're going to tie them in, facing you. And then when it wraps, you're going to have the show side, which is going to be the, the top part. So the idea is not to get these. What I like to do too, just to make it easy on yourself, do a couple loose wraps at the start maybe three or four, and then start pulling it back so you can get that nice taper, get those thin fibers right to the back. Once you get it where you want it, give it a good secure, wrap it, bring it all the way to the front. My bead kind of moved on me there, sideways. Then you can just kind of build your taper with your thread a little bit. Your, uh, your pheasant tail will naturally do that as well. There, I'm just building that up so it's got a nice taper. And what I do is I come in here, I do a light two whip turn finish. Bring that over there. Then I take these fibers, lay them nice and flat like that, just like that, and I start wrapping it around. And this is just going to and it's going to get thicker as it goes up to the front. Your bottom out of the way. One, two, three, one. It's okay, you can always just kind of bring those down. Then, just if you want a nice smooth um, do a little whip turn finish here then what you're going to do is you're going to wrap your wire clockwise uh, in the opposite direction of your pheasant tail and this just gives you a nice good bulletproof abdomen section of your fly or body of your fly. Kind of went a bit crooked on that last wrap, doesn't matter. Can be covered up anyway. So then you come over and you go one, two, three, one, helicopter finish off. You know, just wrap Try and catch some of those fibers down there like that. Then, whip turn finish. Give, it, give, give two of them. Come in there, clip it off. Because then what you're going to do is you're going to come in here with your fire orange eight dot, one, two, three, pull it forward to capture it. Where's my spring scissors? Now, so you got that all in there? Good. You're gonna then take your Kingfisher Blue. This stuff is a fantastic product. Um, it catches fish. It's great if you're fishing and uh, you want to show them something new. You come up with this. I like to break this up when I'm doing it on my nymphs. Just breaking it up like that into smaller fibers. Come in and you start wrapping it around. And remember, always use just a little bit. You don't want to go in there with it too much. That's what often people do. You're basically just covering the thread. You're going to come in there and you're going to wrap that around. If you have to go around it a few more times, that's okay. It just makes it that much stronger of a collar. Wet your fingers down a little bit. Oh, look at that. That's popping, isn't it? 
Oh, yes. Then, what you're going to do now is you're going to build an extra tractor with your collar here with whip turns. One, two, three, four. Now, let me see how it looks on your side. Yep, that's coming through. One, two, three. And then lastly, just to make it all secure, I take a little bit of head cement. Wrap it around. Build it up one. And then one, two, three. And that is a fantastic attractor pattern. It's got the, uh, I'm just going to cut off a little piece of my thread here. It's got the front collar. It's got the little bit of kingfisher here for the collar in the blue. You've got a little bit of pheasant tail off the back for your tail so it doesn't affect the drag in your drift. You don't want too much where it starts slowing down the, the fly. And then you've got a little trigger point in the tail. And that will capture, or will catch you fish. So, one of the questions is, why are we putting fire orange, blue, kingfisher blue in our flies? Um, because they're attractors. They're not a natural color. Uh, when this is going through, right, um, through the current, and you're going through the rocks just below the bottom and stuff, this is hanging like this. Fish see, and it's, you know, it's spinning around all sorts of different directions. Fish see that bit of orange, and it's an attractor. They see it, and it's what they call a little trigger point. And if they're coming from behind and under, they'll see that and they grab it. Also on the collar. So what we have here are two kind of hot, like a little hot spot collar and a trigger point. You add in that blue, which really pops under the water when the light hits it. And uh, they see it, it just looks different than their regular mayfly nymphs coming through or caddis coming through. And, uh, and that works. You put on a 3.8 millimeter tungsten bead on a 14 hook. You know, keep that close to the bottom in relation to the bottom, and uh, that gets you fish.